This is an opportunity that may never come again. And the, the kind of guiding principle I would see or say, suggest to people, it's removing a barrier. The way you draw something represented is the way we can imagine it. If you think about how few crossings there are of the train tracks, if you get rid of the train tracks, then the opportunities to come together, the crosstown connections are unprecedented. Okay, the first idea I was positing was if you treat the train high-speed line in Palo Alto as a line in the middle of a drawing, we'll always be thinking about a line in the middle of the drawing. Two of the spines that have gone through this valley uh, is the El Camino Real and this rail corridor. This is the hills, and this is the bay. So it gives you the opportunity to imagine this as a completely different system where the line is insignificant. If we can remove the barrier, I mean putting it below grade, either in a trench or maybe in some instances we have to possibly use a tunnel, we create the possibility for using air rights over it, and that has distinct value as a, particularly if you're in this area where you have very easy walking access to, to the transportation. And it also, uh, because you're taking away the noise and increasing accessibility, you're building value away from uh, the alignment itself. So as a designer, then, if I'm putting this thing underground, I gotta have then really strong reasons to do that. They're not just cultural. This isn't like deciding, you know, whether you could have a curb cut here or there. This is big, big decisions. A lot of people, uh, especially on this corridor between San Francisco and San Jose, have a really good image in their head of what a commuter rail system is. But a high-speed train system is a very different animal. There are models throughout the world of where high-speed trains have been put into operation. The one that is probably most comparable is Spain. And the Spanish high-speed train system is something that's really developed over the last 15 to 20 years. They had the same issues of trying to get their high-speed trains connected to their downtowns, but like here, their downtowns are surrounded by suburban areas uh, that had existing tracks running through them, and they developed solutions in order to accommodate them. Some of them would go below grade, some of them at grade, so they always were able to figure some way out in order to accommodate the high-speed train being able to get to a downtown. There's certainly nothing easy in, in, in any of the developing solutions for the communities. Certainly from an engineering perspective, being able to see it and build something that's either at grade or above grade is more easy to, for all of us to understand. That goes for the po positives and the negatives. On the positive side, from an engineering perspective, it's, it's, it's fairly easy for us to understand how to make the grades work and how to design the structures to accommodate the high-speed train. On the negative side, it's very clear what the visual impacts might be, the perceived uh, community cohesion impacts from building a, a, a train on a structure. Uh, so it, they're very obvious. It's very obvious for all of us. Underground, the uh, issues aren't as clear. So there's also an Im impression that if it's out of sight, it's out of mind, and it, it's a complete solution, and it's, it's very neat and clean. But that's not always the case either. 
There's two different types of construction method that could be used. One is a cut and cover tunnel, which basically is a box that we construct the side walls, take the earth out and then put a, a floor in and then put a roof on top of it. That's called cut and cover construction. This type of construction in these type of ground conditions has been done before, but that, that is a very linear process and means a lot of disturbance along the alignment, uh, a lot of big heavy construction equipment to, to do that. And the challenge with that is, is how do you keep the Caltrain open and running at the same time as you're building that cut and cover construction box. Now the other type of construction is a board tunnel. We actually tunnel right underneath so you see nothing on the surface. Uh, that would require a specialist uh, tunnel boring machine. Uh, it's called uh, either uh, probably a pressurized faced uh, machine. Um, the largest in the world that they make in those, these types at the moment is about a 50 foot diameter which would be big enough to get two trains in at one time. So that's technology that exists and has been used around the world. It's not new technology. Uh, the ground conditions here are, are not the best. Uh, it's below the water table but it's not something that hasn't been done. Uh, we've just finished a tunnel in Sacramento under the Sacramento River using that type of technique. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very uh, well-known technology in these days. You could have tunnels on top of each other. If you had, for example, if you had four tunnels, you could have two and then two below it. In cut and cover, we could have four along, four in a box long ways, or you could have two up and two down. Actually, that might be quite a nice solution where you had the two Caltrain on the top and the two high-speed rails on the bottom, and. Uh, and then you could have a low level station for the cow train and the high speed rail could go through quite right through. As we go through the design process, you know, a variety of solutions can, are, are in the realm of the possible for the eight miles that we're talking about between Atherton and, and Palo Alto.